Sean Sport in podcast form. Hey everyone, uh, we're going to head over to the US right now. We're going to catch up with Lou Headley, a WA guy who's been drafted into the NFL. That happened just about 10 days ago. Hey Lou, how are you? How you guys doing? Hey, Lou. Glad to be on the show. Mate, how exciting. You're going to get to eat po' boys and gumbo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm over... Uh, I'm currently in Louisiana now. I mean, training camp starts on... Uh, rookie mini camp starts Thursday, so... Kind of got a buddy that I went to college with who lives about 40 minutes out of the city, so kind of just experiencing, you know, the Louisiana stuff and tried some gumbo, crawfish <laughs> and all that stuff. So kind of learning, learning all about now. Yeah, right. Yeah, and you have to go on a stuff. voodoo um, tour as well. Oh, That'd yeah, be compulsory. awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. check out the cemetery, the whole thing. Now, Lou, you're, you're Lehman's finest. You're like the most famous thing to come out of Lehman at this rate. Is there big differences between New Orleans and Lehman? <laughs> uh, yeah, just a little bit. I think the little little town I'm in right now called Covington in Louisiana, is the city of New Orleans looks massive. Yeah. It's definitely a, uh, a long way from uh, you know, playing for the Lehman Marlins. <laughs> Back in the 90s, for sure. <laughs> hey, the Lehman Marlins, do, was your family a crayfishing family? I mean, all that um, uh, yes. coast is. So is, is that what you grew up doing, your your whole mob? Yeah, so my dad was a crayfisherman for a bit, and then he kind of drifted into the mining industry. But for, for a long time, yeah, my dad was working on cray boats and stuff. So my childhood was pretty fun, you know what I mean? I had the ocean there, just run a mark with, you know, my brother and mate. So it was a great spot to, to grow up in. And then um, when I was about... And I moved into Perth City, Secret Harbour. Hey, Lou, when you were signed for the University of Miami, do you, did you get to go to the university or were you just playing sport? What's the deal with that? So when I signed, I kind of left Mandra and I went to junior college in San Francisco because I actually didn't graduate high school, so I had to go get kind of my high school diploma. Oh, okay. So yeah. from there, I got a scholarship to the University of Miami and kind of they flew me out for an official visit, so they kind of fly you out to Miami and kind of show you around, put you in a hotel and... Kind of just talk about how good you know, how good the place is, and I get you to fall in love with it. But that wasn't really too hard, you know. Miami's amazing, so went for my official visit. Then actually went back to Mandra for about three months, where I jumped back on scaffolding, um, <laughs> caught up my old boss, and I was just scaffolding with him for about three or four months, and then flew over to Miami uh, around April, I think, to start the summer workout. And, you know, spent the last four years there. It's been you know an amazing spot, so. I'm sad to leave Miami, but definitely, you know, excited for whatever's next and just, you know, this next chapter of my life. Yeah, Lou, the competition for spots is quite extraordinary. Yes. I know that, that kind of stuff. It is amazing when you think about um, your journey that you, you decided to put down the tools and do what you were doing and just go, mm. I'm, I'm going to university and over yet, in the States. going into the college system. I'm going to get an education. Yeah. And now I'm a chance to play in the NFL. This is ridiculous. Yeah, it's, uh, it's full on. I think I was a full back, so I was always kicking footies, like, always had a decent leg on me, but I think the thought of playing college sports and seeing all the crowds and stuff was obviously a lot more appealing than going back to school, but obviously that's all part of it. And, you know, I can't believe, you know, I'm in the position I am now after looking back. If you've got a good leg playing footy, definitely there's a program called Pro Kick Australia who kind of transitions everyone over here and sends them to a college. So, you know, I haven't really looked back and it was yeah, definitely a crazy move, but it didn't pay off. Oh, wait, hey, so look. you just need one good leg, Sean? Yes. We've right. all got one good leg. I don't no, have a Sean good doesn't. leg. I did not have a good leg. Yeah. <laughs> that means it doesn't hurt, doesn't it? Hey, how, how far can you kick it? American football is kind of weird. Like, it's more so it's you kind of got to hang yeah. the ball up there. It's just as important. Like, height is just as important as distance. So, yeah. You know, a 45-yard punt on paper in a game is, you know, about a 60-yard 60, 60 yeah. ball from where you're actually kicking it from. So, you know, I've been... Sometimes I have like a 70 yard punt or 70 plus, but you really got to hook on to them. And, you know, there's that fine line between kicking the ball long and no hang time because then the ball's going to get returned. So you kind of yeah. got to find a healthy balance. Hey, Lou, can you tell me the feeling it was like when you're running out for the Miami uh, Hurricanes? I mean, we talk about the NFL, but the Miami Hurricanes, you're not running out in front of, you know, a couple of thousand yeah. people around the, the Thunderdome down in Mandra, mate. <laughs> like, this is big time noise, big time. Cheerleaders. Yeah, the whole lot. So, how yeah, many people think, fit in the stadium there? Uh, it was a little different than uh, Bill Thunder Rezies, that's for sure. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's not just a couple of old-timers in the grandstand, but yeah, my first game was against, I think it was Florida, so it was kind of like a rivalry game. Yeah. We met at a mutual stadium, I think, at Camp and World Stadium, and I remember before the game, they had, like, flyer jets come over, and it was, <laughs> it was a full house, so 
the nerves are definitely gone just looking around it kind of took me a while to be like you know this is crazy but once you get a few games in you kind of you know you start doing well you kind of you fit in pretty quick and even this year just gone I think we played some games in front of like Texas Texas a and was like 108,000 or something crazy so just, these big stadiums just feel like coliseums and yeah. Yeah, it's crazy like I said going from you know, a bit of a bit of pure resis to yeah. on the Hayden local Valentine footy down in Manchester, <laughs> coming out there running out to a hundred thousand plus. It, it is wild. It's, That's it's crazy. Hard to fathom. You know what though? If you make it mm. to that team, right, you should start the whole eating a meat pile while watching a game situation. Don't you reckon? <laughs> just get some Aussie thing going get on. Yeah, Aussie everyone thing. just gravitates yes. you. So then suddenly everyone goes, "Wait, there, he's playing yes. today. Let's have a meat pie." Because oh, in America, mm. they meat, a meat meat in a pie blows their mind. They, <laughs> they, pie of fruit, so you can really yeah, that's, them up. that's one thing that is, you don't really get over here. I remember everyone's always asked, "What's the foods back in Australia that you can't get here?" I never really thought about it. I was like, "Ah, oh, I think we, we generally eat anything." But I was like, "When when, we, when I went back home and I seen like a meat pie in a bakery, I was like, oh, yeah, that's that's, that's it. One thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's definitely, it. I, I haven't seen a meat, meat pie in so long. <laughs> yeah, I think when I went back, I had way too many meat pies. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to make up for it. Definitely should bring them to New Orleans for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh well, Lou, we can't wait to follow your journey Good over luck. the next uh, couple of months and 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 even years with a chance to. Uh, be on the New Orleans Saints team. That would be absolutely amazing. Obviously, the money we all know that comes with yeah. that as well. It's not easy, okay. but we wish you all the best, mate. And thanks so much for your time. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me on. Well, we are talking about AFL this morning because Jacob uh, Van Royen, who's a WA guy, got drafted by the Melbourne Demons, was suspended over the weekend for what looked to be a marking contest that he was trying to be um, a part of, defending it. So he was trying the ball to spoil, to yeah? Yes. And... Um, the match review officer, Michael Christian, said, oh, that's two weeks as you hit him in the head. The, uh, sh- what are we listening to? That's your iPad, that's I think, iPad, Nathan. Nathan. It's not on. Yeah, your iPad's on. Yeah. Your iPad's yeah. on. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Can I just say, I don't know, is this happening around the world? Siri is so sensitive lately. Yeah. Have you noticed well, that? Don't get it going again. Oh, mate. I find it's a woman's thing. It's going. going. What do you want? All right, go. Okay, yeah. So anyway, he... Uh, <laughs> so Martin so he was Contest, suspended. he, was, he punched from behind, but yeah. in so doing, he's collected the head of an opposition player. Yes, he, his bicep, not not his, his like his oh, so bicep kind of like... No, no, his bicep kind of hit him in the side of the head a little bit. Anyway, free kick, all the rest of it, no problem at all there. But anyway, so he gets two weeks, match review For that, officer. Appealed yeah, it. Two weeks. So everyone's going, oh, well, they're going to appeal it, which they did, Melbourne, and, you know, they'll give it, they'll they'll tick yeah. it off. They'll go, yeah, okay, we'll move on from here. Well, he went to the tribunal last night and they upheld it, which means he did not win that case at all last night. They're saying, the AFL, who were arguing the point, were saying that um, he should know by the tra- 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 trajectory <laughs> yeah. that the ball is coming in and the force in which he's running in, that if he was to make a play at that ball, then he is going to cause... He's going to cause, you but know, not just that. Uh, Can I just, impact to I, the opposition look, I'm, I, I, I'm, Football's not my first language. But aren't you generally going in hard for the ball all the time? Mm-hmm. Well, that's what you're told to do. So then what? You now, just in case someone's head is to get in the way, you should not go in 100%. Well, you need to, so no, you just like need it. to account for the size of your biceps, Nathan. It's insane. That's where you're going wrong. And you can see that guy was in the, he was in the air. Mm. Like it was ha- well, what he was doing was already happening. He couldn't pull out. No, no. <laughs> when you know what I mean? Yeah, does you can't. Smack of the Nick Natanui case several years ago when he was um, suspended for a tackle that was ostensibly a legal tackle, except that the player was injured. The player that he tackled was injured, and they so then they said that he should have accounted for his body weight and size when he did that tackle, and knowing that he could have injured potentially injured the player that's smaller than him. It's like yeah. these guys aren't doing mathematical equations while they're playing football. Yeah, see, uh, back then it was really iffy. Now that would be a t- that'd be a you know a, a suspension. Well, he was suspended thing. then as well. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it shouldn't have been then. This one just seems absolutely ridiculous. Uh, this is Mark Robinson on AFL 360. This is ridiculous. We don't even know what's going to happen in every action on the field, mate. He didn't know that. He's got no way of knowing. He didn't swing his arm. He went in as a defender with his hand out there. Look at that. 
I'm worried about his heart again. Like he's had a heart attack before. He needs yeah. to look after himself. Don't get so excited. Oh, the overcorrection of any any rules sometimes, it doesn't yes. matter where it is. You know, yeah. someone puts a rule in and they overcorrect it and they go hard at it. It's just so frustrating. And clearly it's just because of the result of it that the, the player was sustained an injury. No, no. He, well, here's the thing that he went off, looked like... The wor- like he was dead. Yes. Yeah, so they, they look like they put net yeah. braces on them. They, they had all these people around. Yeah, it did. It did look He's like. fine. He's not concussed. Yeah. He's right to go. He'll play this week. Then what is the issue? Yeah, really good point. And no, no, no wonder the players are confused. Yeah, it's very yeah. confusing. And and, and not, not only the players, but everyone's yeah. watching it. You know, yeah. there's hundreds of thousands of people involved every week. So very, very I'm not frustrating. Watching it anymore. No, that's it. Nathan's <laughs> drawn a line in the sand. Not watching it anymore. Uh, well, anyway, we've got the governor in tomorrow. We'll ask him too yes. to see As how he defender. feels. He's a defender. Mm. But how about when Gov walks in, I'll already be in the air mm. coming towards him. Don't you hurt him. <laughs> and then we'll say, no, I won't. I'm just going to go for the ball. Okay, you and do then that. We, then we see what happens. All right, you do I, that I actually, and then back it up with Sean Darcy because he's coming in too. I actually want to see what there, happens so when you try that, Nathan. <laughs> 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 just reach over and snap you in half. Gov would, <laughs> would swap me away like a kitten. With a <laughs> Sean Sport is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.